is Rick Morgan. I am your friendly comic book scientist. I am a student of pressing and cleaning comic books, and I wanted to share with you some experiments that I did recently on photo and chemical bleaching of comic books. Uh, it's popular lately. It's been around since the 40s for paper in general, and I referenced this a couple years ago on a paper, on several papers that I'll review. Uh, is the origin of the impetus of this whole thing. Uh, the question has come to me is what frequency of light makes a difference, what a percentage of proxy make a difference, what time makes a difference. It's a great design experiment. I've been working on it for a few months and I'm doing a summary experiment to show you and to confirm and to show you the results that I've been getting. And here's the origin. I'll, I'll start with giving you the origin of the, the theory of what we're doing and then I'll show you my experiment. So here's some collected papers from published from the 60s and 70s and then there's one that's a collection of papers from the 80s that discuss the photo bleaching of paper and there's there's another set of articles that are on the chemical bleaching of paper but that's well known it's been done for a long time so the photo bleaching is of interest i really like these two articles here these 1967 68 ones but what the some of the tables that are summarized here are the wavelength and what you might see like we're used to seeing full spectrum daylight is yellowing paper but it's also bleaching papers so how is that possible and then what do you need to do do you need to bleach it out do you need to like filter out the uv and i think that's the best thing like filter out the uv part right you need to only get the regular photo bleaching and that'll be a future experiment but the leary 1967 paper showed that they had slight graying bleaching bleaching and then slight bleaching at 508, but the bleaching was optimized around 420 to 448. And a little bit of bleaching here, and you'll see, if I'll show you a little bit lower, this is a reflectance graph where they're darkening and bleaching, so it's darkening down to here, and then bleaching up into this range here under fluorescent lamps. But then if we look down here lower, we'll show, and I may have shown this before, we show that the the nadir is around 450 and I found in my own experiments that this is the range that works best right there. It's uh, 430 to 440 millimeter light arrays that are in my Cube box. I only cleaned it on the top and I measured the book after three hours and then again after eight hours and then I did it at 12 hours and finally at 16 and then 24 hours and so you can uh, see the results now. As a quick summary, if you don't want to watch the whole video, this is what the light grid array looked like where we have the concentrations of peroxide across the top which were blocked off from the UV light, the light plus peroxide in the middle and the bottom was just three identical sections of the UV light which I originally intended to have exposure of di different amounts of time, but I forgot to do that. So they're all the same amount of time in each image. Uh, second here, we will see the before and after photos. You can see the initial and then the final photo here. At the end, this photo is actually at, I believe, 18 hours. This last one, yeah, this is the 18 hour photo. It looked the same at 12 and at 24, essentially and you can see the or the overlay grid is for reference. And as a bonus, I washed the front of the book with my washing machine, to see how much stuff I could get out of that. And this is for another, that's for another video, but you can see the, where the paper uh, had leached out the, the dark stuff. And you can see that video here. You can see the, or image here, you can see that the, the before and after of the water, what that looked like. Well, it was pretty dirty. I'll save that for another video, though. These are the three concentrations of peroxide that I concocted, uh, 3, 12, and 30%. Here's a photo of my thumb that burned with a 30% when I got a hole in my glove, so you have to be very careful with that stuff. It's, it's really, really nasty. This is an image of the template over the book. You can see the top row is peroxide only, and then it's light and peroxide, and then just light on the bottom in this particular experiment. During the experiment, the top three holes were covered with polypropylene hexagons to prevent light from reaching the, the top three for this experiment. This experiment was performed uh, with my Immacu Cube box with just the top light array only. The peroxide was applied.
applied initially and not replenished throughout the process. Uh, it was measured at one hour, three hours, eight hours, 12 hours, 18 and 24 hours. And I'm gonna show examples of what that looked like at those specific times. It looked like it, after about 12 hours, I don't, I don't think there was any improvement in the book at all. It looked, it looked really good. And uh, there you go, you can check it out. Here's the experimental setup. You can see it after an hour. The lights are on inside and you can see the top row is blanked with the hexagonal pieces. And then you can see the rest of the material inside the box. The box only got to about 90 degrees Fahrenheit no matter how long I left it on. It did not get very hot at all and it um, seemed to be working pretty well. So here's the, uh, with only half the lights on, here's the UV box. <laughs> you can see the book is in here, doing my experiment. And there is this. It's, it's very, very bright. All right, so this is the 24 hour mark and we're gonna see what it looks like in here. And we will pull this up and look at it right here. And that's the difference. This is the top part is just the peroxide. That's the peroxide plus the light and that's just the light. See the hexagons here from each one? So this is three. 12 and 30 percent. I don't really notice a huge difference between 12 and 30, but the uh, definitely I notice a difference on the other guy there. And we'll wash this too in the washing machine. But let's take a look here at this. People look look how white that is. Look how white that is with just the light from here to here. That is really good. And look at also notice that the greens and the reds aren't bleached out. So that's pretty good, right? Okay, well, we're all done there. Here's what the book looked like initially and initially with the template over it. And then here's the book after eight hours. And then here's the book after 12 hours on the right. You can see the differences here. So what's my overall summary here? Well, the summary is that the photo bleaching was fine by itself on just regular paper. It didn't hurt the red or the greens or the blues and it looked good. I didn't think that adding peroxide would have whitened that any better than, than, than just the regular photo bleaching. Now adding the peroxide would help where you have foxing or a particular stain. If you have some a, a specific stain you're trying to remove that I've known from other experiments that that does help pretty well. The other thing is that the higher concentrations of peroxide didn't seem to make a big difference on just paper. Again, they would make a huge difference if you had a different stain. I would say that looking at this, the bleaching plus photo bleaching, the bleaching with peroxide plus chemical bleaching plus photo bleaching was slightly wider. The paper was also much stiffer there. It was really um, rigid. It might, you know, with some conditioning and steaming and pressing that may be more flexible but it was, you could feel that it was uh, stiffer. Um, I can measure the strength of that later. I'm not sure if it, that, that uh, can be translated into brittleness, but it was physically not bending in those spots as easily when you open the page. So slightly concerning. The 12% was slightly better than the 3%, but the 30% did not appear to be any better than the 12% after uh, just on the regular paper. But again, if there were a stain, there would be a huge difference probably. None of them appeared to hurt the paper at all and by themselves, they also whitened the paper apparently just fine by themselves. Uh, as a little bonus, I did an interior page of the book uh, myself just to, just to check how it bleached out the colors for the paper and here's a little side by side of that interior page. You can see the difference and it looked it looked pretty good. So, well, I hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys around next time.